Welcome. Let's start with a classic little puzzle, the jug filling puzzle. Suppose you're given two containers, a three gallon bucket and a five gallon bucket. And these buckets have absolutely no markings on them, so you can't tell where the one gallon mark is, two gallon mark is, and so forth. But all you know is the volume of the first is exactly three gallons, volume of the second is exactly five gallons. And from a well, you'd like to use these two buckets to obtain exactly one gallon of water. How would you do it? Well, it doesn't take much thought to think through a process, but here's one possible answer. First of all, you could say, throw up the three gallon jug from the well. You know you have exactly three gallons of water there, so I'll depict it this way. Then transfer that three gallons into the five gallon jug. So we have no gallons of water in the three gallon jug, but we still have three gallons of water in the five gallon jug. Now, interesting thing here is that there's two gallons of space left in that five gallon jug, and we know that exactly. Let's use that to our advantage. Let's fill up the three gallon jug again. So three gallons of water and another three gallons of water, and transfer the, what we can to the three gallon jug into that space. That will leave behind exactly one gallon of water. This is looking good. Technically, I have six gallons of water in my possession right now. What I'm going to do now is empty the five gallon jug. And I'm going to say it in a funny way this anti fill the five gallon jug. So I have one gallon of water here, zero gallons of water, and a total of one gallon of water in my possession. So what do we do here? We filled up the one three gallon jug once, we filled it up again over here, and the only other action with the well is we anti filled the five gallon jug. Every in between stage was just transferring, transferring water between the jugs. So what we really did here is filled up the three gallon jugs twice, they gave us six gallons in total, and we emptied the five gallon jug once, that gave us one gallon of water left. So really this jug filling problem is really an arithmetic problem in disguise. What we're really looking for is some combination of threes and fives that gives the answer one. And we use this combination, two times three plus negative one times five is one gallon. But there are other answers as well. Uh, for example, I bet I could use two gallons a two time, the five jug twice, and I could anti-fill, that is empty, the three ga gallon jug thrice. Um, check. Draw a sequence of diagrams showing how you would actually fill up the five gallon jug twice, transfer water between the jugs, and empty the three gallon jug three times, and get one gallon of water in the end. In fact, there's a whole host of solutions to this jug filling problem. Now, the reason I titled this uh, topic the Euclidean algorithm and jug filling is that I can give you more complicated numbers. But you, Mr. Euclid, way back in the day of his famous text, The Elements, talked about how to solve arithmetic problems of this type in general with his Euclidean algorithm. So I have a video on that Euclidean algorithm, um, and I'd like to just briefly remind us how it works, but the details are in that video. For example, let's take the numbers 3 and 5. His algorithm says, just subtract the smaller number from the larger, in which case 5 is the larger, subtract 3 from it gives me 2, leave the smaller number the same and repeat that process. Subtract the smaller number from the larger, that leaves me one there, two up there. Um, subtract the smaller number from the larger, one and one, and stop this process when you get two identical numbers. And the Euclidean algorithm claims that the greatest common divisor is in fact this common value at the end of the process. Um, as a more complicated example, uh, suppose I want to work out the greatest common divisor of 10 and, I don't know, uh, 18. Well, subtract the smaller from the larger, 10 and 8, subtract the smaller from the larger, 2 and 8, subtract the smaller from the larger, 2 and 6, 2 and 4, 2 and 2, and lo and behold, 2 is in fact the greatest common divisor of 10 and 18. But what's interesting about his process, not only did Euclid describe this, he showed there's one consequence to this that solves jug filling problems. That is, if you're looking for solutions of, the for, of, of equations of the form, oops, where's my pen gone? 5x plus 3y equals 1, the greatest common divisor of those two numbers, Euclid's method gives you actual solutions. Here goes. I'm going to follow what we did here. We took the numbers 5 and 3, and we left the, the, num the, the bottom number the same. I shouldn't call it the denominator, I'm not thinking fractions here. But that 2 is really the smallest number taken from the largest. So that's really 5 minus 3. So what I'm going to do is keep track of what the numbers actually are in this process. Now to go from the next line to the uh, from, uh, next term in this, this linear chain, we left the top number the same, that 2 on the top is still 5 minus 3, but this 1 is really this 3 minus this 2. So it's really this 3 minus that top line, 5 minus 3. Let me just do some arithmetic on that, keeping the original numbers 5 and 3 explicit. 3 minus 5 minus 3 would be 2 lots of 3 minus 5. Uh, let's go a little bit further. What's the next step? To go from here to here, we left the bottom number the same, 2 times 3 minus 5. And what we did to get this top number is we took the bottom number away from the top. That is, we took this numerator, 5 minus 3, and subtracted from it the denominator, 2 times 3 minus 5. And keeping the numbers 3 and 5 very explicit, 
the bottom number is still the same, 2 times 3 minus 5. And this will be uh, 2 lots of 5 minus 3 lots of 3. And in fact, there we have it. We know we've got the greatest common factor here, 1 and 1. In fact, I've expressed it two different ways as a combination of the original two numbers, 5 and 3. The first one here, the bottom one on the bottom, we came up with fill up the 3-gallon jug twice, anti-fill the 5-gallon jug once. This solution corresponds to fill up the 5-gallon jug twice, anti-fill the 3-gallon jug thrice. So this process of uh, using the Euclidean algorithm proves a fundamental fact about the greatest common factor of two numbers. And what I need to do with status here is I'll do it in black, which makes it serious. Uh, if I've given two numbers A and B, and suppose their greatest common divisor, greatest common factor is a number D. Euclid actually in his algorithm not only said how to get to the greatest common divisor, repeatedly subtract the smaller number from the larger, but he said if you'd like and want to keep track of all the numbers all the way through, you could actually prove that the greatest common divisor can be written as a combination of the two original numbers. That is, you can find a value for x and a value for y, such that that combination of a and b is going to give you the greatest common divisor. One of these numbers may be negative. So actually, his method allows you to solve any type of jug filling problem. If I was looking to, uh, to solve the problem with a, with a 9 gallon jug and a 16 gallon jug, their greatest common divisor is 1. Yes, his method will give me a means to obtain 1 gallon of water from those two jugs. So here's my little challenge for you. Suppose I gave you a 21 gallon jug, whoops, and a, oh, I don't know, 35 gallon jug. Could you please obtain for me one gallon of water from that? Good luck. Thanks very much.